Firstly, let us address the order of death, that is, the group of all telepaths, including both those who lie to non-psychics to deprive them of their gift, as well as those who do not do so, but who have thus far tacitly allowed the other telepaths to do so. In this lecture, I will discuss how a small faction of telepathic conspirators have come to rule over a psychic empire today. In our order, we call them the Neosethians. Let us begin with the ancient myth within the historical records of our psychic order about the Great Burner, who appears sporadically throughout history to wake up large groups of non-psychics to their full potential. This character occurs in stories about the beginning of civilizations all around the globe. Here we see the Olmec depiction of Viracocha, who settled the lands of Lake Titicaca and introduced water canal technology into the mountains of the Altiplano. Next, we can compare the visage of Viracocha, with his mouth open slightly, to the tongue-out face of the Aztec god of the fifth sun, Tezcatlipoca, founder of the city of Tenochtitlan upon Lake Texcoco. The enormous gate of Viracocha in Tiwanaku and the round Aztec calendar stone depicting Tezcatlipoca. Their connection may have died with Viracocha, however the lid of the sarcophagus of Pakal Votan of Palenque may hint at a further meaning. This meaning may also appear confirmed by comparison to the culture in Assyria, contemporary to the Mesoamerican cult of Viracocha. In Assyria, they venerated the Great Burner in the form of Ahura Mazda, the derivation of the originally Sumerian god Utu, or Shamash, and the followers of this sect in early Persia called their god Ashurbanipal, and described him as having the power of teleportation with the use of what his believers called a Faravahar, or Vimana, a flying transportation craft powered by thought alone. The Tibetan version of the Great Burner story has the sun hero expressed as the wrathful demon Vajra, who spins the six lokas or realms of reincarnation by the eightfold wheel of time. Vajra symbolizes the male equivalent of the Hindu and Krishna Kali, whose yuga role is considered extremely unlucky. Vajra, apart from the loka wheel, is the same mythological character as we have seen in Assyria and Peru. Vajra is an unbridled, raging mad infant whose destruction abates at no bounds. The Minoans of Crete venerated Ishtar, or Inanna, as a temple prostitute, sacred combined into one with profane. In this statue she holds aloft two serpents, symbolizing her conquering the carnal lusts that drive disgust and decay. The snake itself has long been a Middle Eastern symbol of the Great Burner archetype, in that it sheds its skin to be born again. The snake eating its own tail, the Ouroboros symbol of the zodiac, is another sign for the wheel of time that is the craft of the Great Burner. The Gnostics of the Fertile Crescent region some 2,000 years ago, around the time of the life of Christ, denigrated the role of the serpent even more. Rather than exalt the snakes in their defeat, the Gnostics set the serpents as the feet of their god, Abraxas, another incarnation of the recurrent messianic theme. Abraxas was never worshipped as a real god, but was meant as a political parody of the god of the Hellenistic Hebrews, who claimed to be monotheists, but who worshipped Roman gods. His twin snake feet symbolized the shiftiness of his power, and his head, that of a rooster, his immense hubris. At the time the Gnostics were mocking the Jewish god as Abraxas, some of the Gnostic Hebrews were awaiting the coming of the Great Burner. When Christ appeared 2,000 years ago, many hailed him as the second coming of Seth, the first human son of Adam and Eve. These Hellenic Gnostics were called Sethians, or Sethites, 
then. Now, let us skip ahead roughly a full solar eon to discuss the role played by certain psychics within the order of death during the last century prior to now. Now, the Sethians of 2,000 years ago have been replaced by a new breed of Christians, obsessed with the second coming and rapture legends of St. John of Patmos. They eagerly await the second coming of Jesus now, just as 2,000 years ago they eagerly awaited the second coming of Seth. The first psychic conspirator to latch on to the need for such a movement to occur at this time on the calendar now one eon following Jesus, who followed Moses, who followed Abraham, who followed Noah, who followed Adam, was Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. She began a resurgence of second coming mythology by linking Jesus to seven ascended masters who chose to reincarnate as gurus on earth. Blavatsky garnered strong support and a wide-ranged following. Among these were several high-ranking Freemasons, including a few who drew such inspiration from the success of Blavatsky's Theosophy that they formed a cult of their own called the Golden Dawn. The Golden Dawn was heavily premised on being in contact with Blavatsky's secret chiefs or invisible brotherhood. The Golden Dawn became a nexus of work by enthusiastic occultists and esoteric philosophers among whom was one named Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley rose to power over all the cults and mystery schools of his day, achieving the same degree of infamy while alive and fame after death as Pythagoras himself ever had. Aleister Crowley was the first Neo-Sethian to be appointed inner head of the Order of Death. Upon ascending as the IHO, it fell to Crowley to choose a disciple, an outer head of the order, and he worked directly with many, however his chief spiritual disciple was someone Crowley may have never even met in person, the author William Burroughs. Burroughs took the law of do what thou wilt into the realm of novel fiction. Pursuing the same reckless course with drugs as Crowley had, Burroughs became a junkie in order to trans-channel higher states of consciousness. His term for the beings he perceived was nothing so polite as Great White Brotherhood. He called them the Mugwumps, and described them as part reptilian, part insect. When Crowley died, Burroughs ascended to the position of IHO, and among his many students, none was more favored by him, albeit again in secret in his mind, without having ever come across in contact to him, than Jim Morrison of the rock band The Doors. Just as Burroughs had birthed Thelema into the limitless wonderland of pulp books, Jim Morrison was able to transform an even wider audience, all at the same time, by performing sacred shamanic trance ceremonies on the crowds at his rock bands sold out shows. Jim dubbed himself the Lizard King and saw himself as the reincarnation of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent of Mesoamerican myths, also called Kukul Khan. Quetzalcoatl in Mesoamerican theology was a contemporary god to the reign of Babylonian Marduk. Both represent the Great Burner as an evil, jealous demon of mass destruction. Now that we have come to the present once more, let us address the Neo-Sethian politicians who staged a coup d'etat against the democratic constitution of the United States from November 1999 until 9-11, 2001, when they declared their victory over all free minds. These politicians share the same belief in the rapture and the need to control society around that concept it was shared by Crowley, Burroughs, and Morrison. However, their motives are wholly evil. Because of the mass sums of hallucinogens and Reich Edom training of the masses they have orchestrated for the past three generations, it is now possible for many more non-psychics to catch glimpses of these souls' true forms beneath their fleshly facades. 
The reason the Neosethians shapeshift is due to psychic pollution, causing them advanced rates of mutation. The reason they shapeshift into reptilians is that they use only their hind brain stems and act only out of cold-blooded fear. As some of the Neosethians have aged, they have begun to become more insectile in appearance. However, both are devolutionary species of the psychic mugworms. The reason we see the Neosethians as reptilian shapeshifters is not because they see themselves that way. They do not. They see themselves as elite, rich globetrotters, a new jet set to unite and rule the world. However, we who are psychic but not part of the Neosethian conspiracy within the Order of Death see these poor souls as simply having become possessed by the fever of the Great Burner due to the peak of the sunspot cycle between 2001 and 2012. President Obama has often been presented by an over-friendly media market as the savior of the world. They see him as a second coming of John D. Rockefeller, capable of overturning the mistakes made by George Bush Jr., the last hero they touted as such, and restoring American politics' good name. Some ex-military remote viewers, PSYOPs, have put forth the theory Obama is actually a clone of the Pharaoh Akhenaten's mummy, long believed lost from the Valley of the Kings. Whether or not Obama really is a clone of a mummy, he is certainly being built up to be more than he should be. Where do his loyalties lie? It remains to be seen.